My name is J. Paul Massey Singh, Chair of the Brampton Board of Trade. And on behalf of the Brampton Board of Trade and Rogers Television, welcome to the Federal Candidates Debate for the Riding of Brampton West. The purpose of this debate is to give our viewers an opportunity to better know the candidates in their riding and where they stand on issues both nationally and locally. We're pleased to be joined today by four candidates from the Conservative Party of Canada, Nender Thind, from the NDP, Adoma Patterson, from the Liberal Party, Kamal Kara, and from the Green Party of Canada, Kartika Gobinat. Prior to this recording, the candidates drew numbers to determine the order in which they'll be speaking. Each candidate will have the opportunity to make a brief opening statement, after which time our panel of community members will ask questions regarding to issues of the day. The candidate to whom the question is posed will have the opportunity to first answer, after which the conversation will be opened up to the other candidates to comment or rebut. Sitting on our panel today are three members of our business community. Todd Letts, CEO of the Brampton Board of Trade, Tina Larson, President of PCMF and a member of the Board of Directors at the Board of Trade, and Badar Shamim, Chair-Elect of the Brampton Board of Trade. At the conclusion of the question period, each candidate will have the opportunity to make a final statement to you, our viewers. With that said, the individual who drew the first number is Ninder Thind, and I turn it over to her. Hello everyone, my name is Ninder Thind. I'm the Conservative Party candidate for Brampton West. I want to say that I'm very honored and privileged to be here with everyone today. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a proud mother. I was a former school teacher and school principal right here in Brampton. I worked at the Region Appeal in the, in, with high-risk families dealing with some intense and crisis families. Uh, the past four and a half years, I've worked for the federal government, working with Brantonians, uh, helping them with their issues and their concerns, and I've got experience working with all three different levels of government. I am, I am I'm very grateful to be here. I've done some charity work that I am involved in, uh, helping those in need in our community, both here as well as internationally. I am extremely proud of what our Conservative government has done so far. We've balanced the budget. We've kept our economy strong. We've created 1.3 million net new jobs since the depth of the global recession. And we've lowered our taxes. We've got the lowest taxes uh, in over 50 years. Uh, we've introduced universal child care benefits for families. Uh, we've uh, doubled the fitness tax credit. Uh, and we've introduced uh, pension income splitting uh, for seniors. These are all wonderful things and very few examples of what the Conservative government has done this far, thus far. And I look forward to having, uh, to working uh, as part of the Conservative team. And uh, I'm looking forward to a very productive uh, debate today with my fellow colleagues that are all here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Tind. Ms. Patterson? Uh, my name is Adoma Patterson, and I'm proud to be the NDP candidate uh, for Brampton West. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about the issues that matter most to the residents of Brampton. I have been a champion for progressive public policy and experienced local leader and facilitator who has worked many years to make our society a more fair, balanced, and representative place. I believe we are stronger when all members of our community feel connected and will be your strongest advocate and representative voice for Brampton West in Parliament. As I knock on doors, I hear over and over again that it is time for change, that after 10 years of conservative rule, many people feel they are no further ahead and that things are not working as well as they should be. The NDP has a strong history of speaking out on issues impacting our most vulnerable, as well as the middle class. We believe the federal government has an important role to play in making life better for all residents in, in Peel, and other Canadians. We are committed to making childcare more affordable, supporting small businesses, kickstarting the manufacturing sector, and creating opportunities for youth, and working collaboratively with our provincial and municipal counterparts. I look forward and want to salute my fellow colleagues, uh, all women uh, in Brampton West running, and uh, I look forward to today's debate. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. Thanks. Ms. Kara. Hello, my name is Kamal Kara and I'm your federal liberal candidate <coughs> from Brampton West. My parents made great sacrifices so that I could live the Canadian dream. With hope and hard work, Canada helped my family reach its true potential. Today, I'm a registered oncology nurse, my, and my brother is serving as a member of Royal Canadian Air Force. Over the past decade, under the current government, achieving the Canadian dream has become much more challenge cha challenging for middle-class families. I see middle-class families struggling to make ends meet, 
hardworking families deserve the equal opportunity to realize their Canadian dream just like my family did. We need to defend and improve our health care system. The federal government refuses to prov provide adequate and sustainable long-term funding for health care. As a registered nurse and a community volunteer, I have seen firsthand how the funding system fails to meet the families in Brampton West. I have met many families uh, that have been torn apart by the exclusionary immigration policies of the Conservatives. Immigrants are nation builders and are a critical component of, of our economy, our culture and our society. Our country's infrastructure deficit puts a large burden on high growth communities like Brampton. This reduces the quality of life for residents and makes it difficult to create sustainable, well-paying jobs in our community. I'm running for a party that has a real plan. Our historic liberal infrastructure investment will improve transit in Brampton, build clean infrastructure, and create good-paying jobs to support and strengthen our middle class. The Liberals will also repeal Bill C-24 and make immigration more compassionate and inclusive. And the Liberals will work with the provinces to ensure that Canadians get the best health care that they need. I'm a grassroots individual fighting for people like you. I will fight for the priorities and values of the middle class families that live in Brampton West. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kara. And Ms. Gobinath. Good afternoon. My name is Kartika Gobinath, and I'm your, I'm your Green Party candidate for Brampton West. Just by way, way of background, I am a policy advisor for a local community organization called India Rainbow Community Services Appeal. I work for the Ministry of the Attorney General, um, and also I completed a master's in public policy administration and law. Canada stands behind many other countries um, and is lacking in na national, uh, national goals uh, and strategies in various uh, pressing issues. The region of Peel is the second largest in Ontario with a population growth of 1.38 million. We are the only country in the OECD, which is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, without a national policy in various issues, such as energy and education, healthcare and housing, transportation, climate and culture, and many more. The Green Party of Canada is not a one-issue party. We believe in a Canada that works together, and with your help, we can build together. Thank you, Ms. Gobanath. Thank to all of you. I'd now like to turn it over to our panelists to ask some questions and get the conversation started. Mr. Letts, what would you like to ask our candidates? Thank you, Jay Paul. I'd like to direct this question to uh, Ms. Thin of the Conservative Party. Small business is a large part of the Board of Trade and is a large uh, job creator in uh, not only our region but throughout uh, the nation as well. In a recent survey by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, employers reported that 28% of the jobs that they have vacant they're unable to fill, uh, unable to find candidates with the uh, proper match of skills to jobs. My question to you is, what can we do uh, to help small businesses, and in particular, uh, what would you suggest for the immigration system to help small businesses fill those vacancies um, faster? Thank you very much, that's a great question. Our government has a track record when it comes to small business. Uh, we understand it's the backbone of our economy. It's what drives our economy. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, we are, we are focused on this. And uh, over 80% of jobs are uh, held by uh, small businesses. Um, we, as a, as a conservative government, um, are, you know, doing, taking measures to lower uh, taxes, uh, small business taxes, which will help the economy, help to create more jobs as well. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we just announced that we're, um, we're, we're working to reduce our biz small business tax uh, taxes from 11% to 9%, uh, and we're focused. We're focused on uh, recruiting, uh, um, uh, whether it be new immigrants, whether it be uh, youth, whether it be uh, just generally anybody who's looking for jobs. That's our number one focus. We are focused on job creation, uh, and you look at our record. We've created 1.3 million net new jobs, and majority of these jobs are in the private sector. They're full-time jobs, and they're well-paying jobs. Ms. Patterson? Yes. So uh, it's a very good question and important, particularly for Brampton West, where the majority of the businesses are small businesses. Uh, and the NDP was clear right at the beginning. We've been transparent and released our platform early on that said that the support for small businesses is a key component of our platform. And I'm happy to see that uh, the Conservative government has now made a commitment to reducing the small business tax. We had also uh, promised to reduce it 
from 11% to 9%, and to also assist small businesses with innovation so that they can be sustainable and scale up, so that they're able to hire locally. Many residents, when we knock, I knock on doors, they tell me that they have to commute too far uh, for jobs. And so these small businesses and being able to match with skills and young people is a critical piece of our platform. Ms. Kerr, to you, and, and the question again, speaking specifically to some of the skill shortages that happen to be there because we can't find skilled workers here in Canada that can fit to some of those spots. I know, and, and thank you for the question. It's a great question, and it's a real issue here in Brampton West. Uh, and one thing I just want to point out, it's clear that the Harper Plan, it just hasn't worked. It has failed us as Canadians, and it has failed us residents in Brampton West. Uh, Canadians have a reason to be concerned about their jobs and economy, and we're now in our second recession. Uh, there are 200,000 more unemployed Canadians than before the first uh, recession. Uh, you know, our, and I'm very proud to say with our historic 125 billion intra infrastructure plan will create more jobs and, uh, you know, kickstart our economy. And, uh, and, you know, we will invest 750 million in skills and job training for our skilled workers. Ms. Gobinoff, do you have a perspective you want to share with us? Yes, I'm quite surprised that the uh, Conservative Party uh, has stated that um, they have created jobs. In fact, they have uh, all they have done is cutbacks, cutbacks, and cutbacks. Um, look at Alberta, for example, 30,000 jobs have been cut back, and uh, everyone is pretty much in this situation because of the Conservatives uh, who are in power right now. Um, as the Green Party of Canada, we propose a national sustainable jobs plan. We ensure that small business owners and entrepreneurs have the access uh, the access to funds that they need to start these businesses and uh, um, create lo local jobs within the community. Uh, Brampton has a uh, percentage of 50.5% of immigrant population uh, itself, and we are a highly skilled workforce. I'm quite surprised that uh, the stats are saying that we're a, shor a shortage of skilled workers. There's a lot of skilled workers in Brampton. It's just a matter of speeding up the process because all these people don't have the license to pursue the, pr uh, the stream that they want to pursue into. So we have to speed up the process, and the Green Party supports that. Thank you, Ms. Gobinath. Uh, Ms. Patterson, and then over to you, Ms. Tin. Yeah, I want to go back to the issue of uh, the skills shortage. I think with all of the changes that have been made to the Immigration Act uh, over the last couple of years, employers are still struggling to find uh, workers and find sufficient uh, employees to meet some of the shortages. So uh, I suspect that a lot of that is about the red tape, the, the constant changes that the Conservatives have made to the Immigration Act. Um, and so uh, the NDP is committed to working with all of the licensed prof professions, uh, the regulating bodies, to make sure, to work together to make sure that we understand what they need in order uh, to meet those shortages. Yes, um, I'd just like to add that uh, I grew up um, with uh, my family owned a small business in Brampton for 25 years and I understand the importance of small businesses I understand uh, you know what what entails to have a small business and how it helps our economy you know our, our it, overall by 2019 we are committed to reducing the small business tax burden by 46 percent uh, and I'd like to add to this, the 1.3 million net uh, new jobs that I'm talking about are not, are not uh, numbers that I'm just making up. This is from Statistics Canada. Anybody can go and have a look. Uh, you know, this is we're, we're proud of our accomplishments. And even with our immigration policies, we have a great skilled workers program because we understand that we want to have uh, skilled people coming into our country and helping our economy because our number one job, pri our number one priority is the economy and job creation. Ms. Kerr, and then back to you, Ms. Patterson. Thank you, and uh, with all due respect to my conservative uh, candidate, uh, Brampton West, uh, you know, the unemployment rate here is 10%, and our youth unemployment is 13.1%. And yes, I have been hitting those doors as well, and I've been talking talking to a lot of people, and people are working so hard to make ends meet, and they're concerned about how are they going to send their kids to post-secondary -sec education, and how, how are they going to, uh, you know, have enough savings to go even uh, to, to save for their retirements. Uh, you know, Liberal Party is the only party with a real plan for real change. Uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, you know, with our, with our historic 150 billion infrastructure plan will create growth, new jobs, and kickstart off the economy. Uh, the neoliberal government will also invest 1.3 billion 
uh, over three years, which is 13 times more wow. of the NDP, to create 40,000 new jobs through a new annual investment of 300 million in the renewed youth unemployment strategy. And, uh, and you know, we will also, uh, you know, when workers are trying to hire new hires, we'll make sure uh, that we eliminate, uh, eliminate the employer's uh, employment insurance for the first 12 months for the, you know, f uh, for the, fr so this will encourage, uh, you know, private sector's company to create more youth jobs as well. Thank you. Ms. Patterson, we're talking about job creation. What kinds of jobs are we creating? And are these skilled jobs that we can, that are going to help our economy and our, our society? And that's exactly the point I wanted to raise. So it's not enough for the Conservatives to say they have uh, created jobs. The fact of the matter is, in Peel, since the 2008 recession, um, we have, our unemployment rate has been higher, both the youth unemployment and the overall unemployment rate. And it's just in 2015, in the first quarter, that we've started to see some bounce back. Uh, if you look at the PIL data center's um, tracking of unemployment, it has been a concern because manufacturing was hit. Where we see the growth is really in those service sector lower paying jobs. And this issue of precarious employment, unstable um, work without benefits, you know, is the concern for uh, Brampton, Peel region, uh, and Brampton West. And I think we have to pay attention to the kinds of jobs. And the NDP platform speaks very clearly about creating good, paying jobs that can support their family, that is local, using infrastructure and investing in infrastructure and transit to allow, uh, to create employment and training opportunities Thank for you, young Ms. people. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. Ms. Tim. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting to hear, uh, you know, the Liberal and the NDP talking about uh, creating jobs because what they really want to do is they want to introduce a job killing carbon tax, which will tax everything. and that going from your groceries to gasoline, uh, it, will char it will tax everything which will bring our economy down. Our focus is job creation. And let me just, uh, just say what uh, Justin Trudeau had mentioned and said about most small businesses, that a large percentage of these are schemes for wealthy Canadians to avoid paying taxes. We don't believe in that. We believe that small businesses are uh, the backbone of this economy and they are the ones that drive this economy. Ms. Gobanoff, how would the Green Party create jobs? What kinds of jobs would they create? Well, um, instead of focusing on Justin, Tr Justin Trudeau, I do want to focus on the residents of Brampton. So narrowing the issues just to Brampton itself. Um, students, um, the Liberal Party candidate did mention an important point uh, in regards to student, student debt. And we are the only party here that um, has a uh, plan for students. We're going to abolish tuition fees um, in regards to um, by anyone who has over $10,000. We're going to have a debt for forgiveness program so that um, they're not burdened with debt. And by 2020, we're going to integrate a program so that we abolish tuition fees so that people, um, students who are coming out of school are, are debt free and we can give them a helping hand into the workforce. I myself uh, just recently graduated and I am still paying my student debt and uh, I can um, identify the issues that, uh, especially with the uh, Peel residents, there's um, the highest age group is 14 to uh, age to 14 to 24. So they're all in that uh, category and we need to help those students first and education is the biggest problem right now uh, and we shouldn't be paying for education. It should be a basic need that it should be there. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take uh, our conversation in a different direction. Uh, Ms. Larson, what would you like to ask our candidates? I'm going into infrastructure. Oh. And as a business owner and a resident of Brampton, our commute time has gone very lengthy. We have more and more cars on the roads every day. Where do you feel the transportation infrastructure investments needs to be made best to benefit Brampton? And how will you work with the other levels of governments to balance the needs against those com other communities? Uh, Ms. Patterson. Yes, so thank you for the question. Very important. Uh, I too commute um, and uh, see, and many have talked about the frustration of uh, the 410 in the mornings and in the evenings. Uh, the NDP uh, is committed and a key part of the platform is long-term sustainable funding in infrastructure and transportation. What has been missing in the last 10 years is this annual sort of stable ongoing funding. Uh, transit is key. I had someone last week tell me that uh, the cost to take the bus in Brampton is $3.75 and they're finding it very tough to be able to pay that on an ongoing basis. And that's because transit doesn't get uh, regular ongoing support from uh, the federal government. And the federal government needs to be a partner. Improving transit is going to be a key uh, part 
of the solutions for transportation and infrastructure in Brampton. Um, there are only so many roads that can be built, and so we have to encourage other modes uh, for people to get around. Uh, thank, the thank you, Ms. Thank Patterson. You. We'll come back to you, but uh, Ms. Carroll wanted to weigh in. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. And you know, we all know that Brampton needs investment in public transit. We all commute. I'm a registered nurse. I work 12 hours. I commute to downtown. That's 15 hours of my day. You know, getting stuck uh, in Fort on 410, and you know, in Brampton, getting from one end of Brampton to the other. We all know it takes about an hour or so. Uh, so we definitely, I think, we can all agree the fact that you know, Brampton needs uh, investment in public transit. It affects each and every uh, every one of us here. Unfortunately, Harper once again has failed us. Uh, Bramptoniers are now spending more time in traffic, uh, and then than they do with your families. A Liberal government will more than triple federal investment in public transit over the next four years and even quadruple it over the, over the next 10 years. Uh, we will boost this investment in public transit by 20 uh, by 20 billion over the next 10 years and and you know this will ease off some of the gridlocks uh, so Canadians can s spend more time uh, at home with their families and less time in traffic. Ms. Gobina? So I myself take uh, public transportation on a daily basis. The biggest problem that I find, especially in Brampton, is um, some of these areas where there's developments, especially in housing, there's not enough transportation around that area. So people have to take connecting buses, spend more time waiting for the bus than taking the bus. Um, and Brampton is one of Ontario's primary uh, freight hubs. So um, there is gridlock uh, tra uh, traffic uh, in roads, especially in the highway and the GTHA area. And the Green Party, what we're going to do is we're going to improve the funding um, for the shortfall for infrastructure and municipality, um, so the for the flow of commerce itself. Um, Another thing I do want to point out is that um, we want to invest in green technology so that while we're doing these uh, uh, changes, we want to make sure that we control greenhouse uh, gas emissions at the same time, meeting the targets. Thank you. Ms. Ten? Yes. Uh, I just want to point out that unlike m the other candidates here, I've worked in Brampton for nearly 20 years. Uh, all of my work experience is in Brampton. And so I understand the issues with uh, the 410. I understand the issues that we do have with infrastructure, but we have a track record uh, with the investments that we've made to infrastructure. In 2014, we launched a new Building Canada plan, uh, the largest long-term infrastructure plan in Canadian history. This plan provides $53 billion for provincial and municipal infrastructure needs. And I'm going to give some facts and figures that we uh, in the in the 2015 City of Brampton uh, uh, budget uh, alone, 30 million dollars are uh, are from the gas tax fund, uh, and this is a loan for the City of Brampton. We've already given the Brampton Zoom Bus project 126 million dollars. We've Thank already given Mount Thank Pleasant. You, Thank you, Ms. Ten. Uh, Ms. Kerr, you want to weigh in, and just to, to, to frame the question, when we talk about infrastructure, we start talking about the investments made, um, there's always a question that comes about as, as what, regardless of what the dollar amounts are, are they enough for what Peel Reach and what Brampton needs? Are we getting the amount of money that we deserve as a community? Uh, and thank you. Exactly. That's exactly the point I was going to hit. Um, you know, the Conservatives love to talk about facts and numbers, uh, but the reality is uh, we haven't gotten our fair share of infrastructure funding here in Brampton. Uh, you know, we got some funding, sure, uh, but it wasn't enough. And the reason why was because our MPs did not fight for it. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have three sitting MP uh, from Brampton in a clear majority over the last eight years, and we haven't gotten our fair, fair share of infrastructure here in Brampton. And I think part of uh, my job will be to make sure that we get you know, the, the investments that, that we're making, uh, 125 billion over uh, you know, billion dollars of infrastructure investment. Uh, part of that, of my job will be to represent Brampton West in Ottawa, be the voice of Brampton West in Ottawa and not the other way around, and to make sure that we get our fair share of funding here in Brampton for our transit. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Patterson, then Ms. Tenda, then Ms. Gobinat. Mm -hmm. So I think there are two key issues here. I will agree with my Liberal counterpart that uh, the issue of the fair share funding is key, and representation is important. Because when you have MPs that are willing to fight for their riding, to speak up and to always be there to make sure that uh, you get your fair share, um, you know, that's an important component. But more importantly, actually, is ongoing sustainable funding. So announcements are great. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of red tape and bureaucracy when those plans, when the conservative plans are announced. We want to make it easier for cities to access funding, but also to be able to plan long term. 
So if you know exactly what you're getting, just like in your household budget, you know what you're getting annually, it is therefore much easier for you to plan consistently uh, and to think about the growth of your city long term and not always having to catch up. Thank you. Ms. Tim? <coughs> I'd like to uh, uh, just repeat that this is uh, the new Building Canada plan is the largest plan, infrastructure plan in Canadian history. So it's doing a lot more than whatever you know the Liberal Party, uh, the Liberal Party has done in the past. We have a record. Uh, we understand that infrastructure I infrastructure is a priority, and this is why we are focused on infrastructure. And I would like to just add to that: in Brampton West, we've allocated uh, 23 million dollars to the Mount Pleasant. Uh, Pleasant uh, GO station in Brampton West because we understand that commuters, uh, you know, we want to make sure that commuters can travel inside and outside of the city properly. Thank you. And Ms. Gobinath, the last word on this topic is yours. One thing I do want to say in regards to uh, transportation itself, Canadians are not just facing poverty but also time poverty. Everyone is spending time, more and more time tra commuting to and from work and school, so there needs to be a change. And throwing money at a problem is not the way to solve it. it we need to really look, get into the problem and solve, solve it by getting all the stakeholders at the table, um, especially with the Brampton uh, new movement with the LRT. We need to make something happen because there is a population growth. Something needs to change. Thank you. Mr. Shaman, what's Thank on your you. mind? Well, sticking with uh, the spending, uh, uh, infrastructure spending uh, and related spending uh, theme, there are two different schools of thoughts in times of uh, crunch. When economies tend to slow down, there are some who will uh, propagate that uh, uh, indirect intervention through monetary policy and re-stimulating the economy through uh, providing stimulus to consumer and uh, corporate spending is the way to go. Meanwhile, others believe that the governments need to step up and uh, uh, increase uh, the economic activity through direct intervention and uh, spending money uh, on uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, which creates a whole different dialogue in terms of how necessary is it to have balanced budgets uh, versus government spending in times like these. Where do each of you stand on that topic, or where does your, your uh, uh, party stand on that topic? And we'll start with Kara. Uh, sure, and, and you know that's something that's uh, that we have seen that the Harper government has clearly failed us uh, for over a decade. They've turned a decade of liberal surpluses into eight straight years of deficits. In 2008, uh, Harper promised that he would never run a deficit, and then immediately turned around and did just that. Uh, he cannot hide from the facts today. With the fall in oil prices and then the further slowdown of the Canadian economy, the parliamentary budget officer has shown that the federal government will run a deficit again once a year. And you know, they love to talk about, you know, this year we talked about, uh, you know, they love talking about balancing their budget. And we know that they did that by, by uh, you know, uh, selling our GM shares. They did that by uh, taking money from the contingency funds. And they did that by underspending. So some of the services such as uh, Veterans Affairs and our youth uh, employment strategies, they, it was a gimmick. They gave them money, uh, they told them not to spend it, and took it back so they can balance the budget. The Liberal Party is the only party that has a clear plan uh, you know, to make this change. Uh, our historic 125 infrastructure, uh, infrastructure plan will create growth and new jobs and kickstart kick the economy. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Kara. Ms. Patterson? Um, so the New Democrats uh, have a proud history of balancing books. Uh, it was Tommy Douglas, through his careful management, that was able he was able to introduce Medicare in Saskatchewan. I think we know that um, you can grow the economy while living within its means. The Liberal Party uh, has said that they will run deficits for three years. We haven't seen the numbers, uh, and we are concerned um, that there is no clear plan. Uh, you know, one day. They say the numbers have been presented, and another day uh, they are coming. Uh, the NDP has presented our plan, and we have a plan to balance the budget while investing in important things like infrastructure. Ms. Then? Yes, absolutely. I just want to make note that uh, you know we've balanced the budget. Bu balancing a budget is very important. We actually uh, just recently we he we heard that we. Uh, are nearly at a over two billion, uh, nearly close to two billion dollars surplus, uh, one year ahead of the schedule, um, and you know the first quarter already we're in a five billion uh, dollar surplus, and this is thanks to 
uh, the conservative government. We, we don't overpromise. Uh, we say what we're going to do, and that's exactly what we've done, and we're one year ahead of schedule. Now, uh, I, I understand uh, Ms. Kara is talking about, uh, you know, that the Conservative Party, um, you know, uh, uh, went into deficit. Well, let me just say this. The Liberals, uh, you know, they also, um, they went, uh, they balanced their budget back then at the cost of uh, the provinces. We, um, we are at a surplus, and we've doubled the transfers to the provinces, and Ontario gets one of the most, uh, the most money when it comes to our transfers. Thank you, Ms. Ten. Ms. Kerr, if you can respond, and I think just want to come back to Mr. Shamim's question, I think part of that as well was not just around uh, an ability to, to, to balance a budget, but whether it's okay to run a deficit and in, in, in order to, to meet the needs of, of Canadians. And, and so to that end, you know, where, where is it okay to run a deficit? Is it okay ever to run a deficit? Well, no, sorry, and thank you for the question again, uh, and that's exactly what I was actually get, getting into. Uh, you know, Liberal Party, we're, we're, uh, we have a plan to be in an open, transparent government, and we've been very clear, and, and you know, you know, uh, Ms. Patterson talked about, you know, she doesn't see the numbers, it, you know, you can go to the liberal.ca liberal website, they're all there, uh, and we're, we're being transparent and telling people, yes, uh, you know, this is the time to invest in our infrastructure, uh, A, because, uh, you know, the economy is pla flat, our interest r rates are low, and this is the time to invest in our infrastructure to create more jobs and kick off this, uh, Kick, st kick start the economy and yes we said we will run modest deficits for two to three years but we will balance the uh, balance the books in 2019. Ms. Gobina? Balancing the budget I'm su quite surprised uh, that the Conservative Party uh, claims that they have balanced the budget. They did balance the budget far to the right by cutting all the essential services in the, at the municipal level. Um, first and foremost uh, the municipal order of government is not even men mentioned in our constitution. So we need to make sure that there is a voice to speak on behalf of the municipal level, where all the essential services are met in regards to garbage, transit, infrastructure. All the residents in Brampton, when I was door knocking, these are the issues that they have. Let's look at the local issues. And in regards to the tax system itself, the Green Party wants to reform the tax system because majority of the money is staying at the top level. 50% of the money is staying at the federal level, 42% uh, at the provincial level, and only 8% is going to the municipal level. So if there's no reform, even though what we do, it's still going to stay at the top because there's not going to be enough money or services going down to the municipal level. Thank you. Ms. Then to then to you, Ms. Patterson. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're facing a global economic downturn. Uh, you know, we're in a very fragile time. You look outside our borders, uh, you, look, you look to see what's going on in Europe, or you look to see what's going on in Greece. They're at the verge of uh, bankruptcy. We, this is not a time to run deficits. We need to stay above water. We need to continue our economic we need to make sure that we're keeping our economy uh, strong and we're creating jobs. Uh, we don't want uh, to raise taxes. We can't afford that right now. We do not want uh, to have a job-killing carbon tax, which will take us uh, uh, economically in the downturn. And Ms. Patterson, last word is yours. Yes. So surpluses uh, happen when you don't spend the money <coughs> and <coughs> you don't spend your annual budget. Uh, so the cuts really uh, are coming, the conservative cuts are coming on the back of residents. Uh, we propose to, of course, raise the corporate tax. They have not agreed to do that. Um, so we think it's important, while you know, a deficit may be a short-term solution and may be needed in, times of, in difficult times, you have a longer-term plan. Right? And that programs like employment insurance uh, and other things, health care, for example, when you withdraw you know, billions of dollars from health care, absolutely you're going to end up with a surplus. But is that the right thing to do? Thank you very much for your thoughts on this. Mr. Letts, what would you like to ask the candidates? Um, I'll direct my question to uh, Ms. Patterson, mm -hmm. uh, and, but to all candidates as well. Uh, it's a difficult job being an MP, representing uh, your own uh, riding, your own constituents. And in the party system, there's also an expectation that you will follow uh, the leader. Mm -hmm. My question is about your, your personal leadership style mm -hmm. in the context that many of our members take a look at fairness and confederation, take a look at uh, how much is spent in Ontario uh, through the Federal Economic Development Agency, for example. It pales in comparison to the uh, Economic Development Agency in, in Quebec. Uh, Ontarians see that they pay about $20 billion more in the EI system than they collect. So um, those two examples are one of, uh, I, 
uh, I guess, unfairness that has been brought to our attention, what will you do? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and tell us a little bit about your leadership style in ensuring that Ontario, Brampton, and Peel gets mm -hmm. its fair share. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I consider myself a community developer. Um, I am a person, a very, a person who's very close to uh, folks on the front line. I have worked in social services for 15 years. I understand the challenges that uh, people on social assistance or people who are waiting for six years or more for housing, social affordable housing, have. Uh, and so my leadership style really comes from being an advocate. That has been my primary role uh, for many, many years, um, particularly in my position at the region of Peel, where I focus on poverty reduction. Um, and so it's a natural alignment for me to sort of fight for the residents of Brampton West. I also understand the fair share issue well, and the fact that uh, particularly in Peel and uh, more broadly in Ontario, we have really not been getting uh, the allocation, the dollars um, from the federal government um, and even the provincial government in the case of Peel that we are entitled to. And so my job is to one, represent the residents of Brampton West, to speak on their behalf, to talk about the issues that are important, to raise them, make sure that the voices that are often ignored uh, are heard and incorporated in the dialogue, which is the reason that I'm running. Um, and then to look and work with my colleagues uh, provincially and particularly locally in a collaborative way to push the issues to make sure that the funding um, and the essential services that need support are supported. Thank you very much, Ms. Patterson. Ms. Govanath, how would you demonstrate leadership in our community? I do want to let you uh, let everyone know here that um, all these politicians, all these main three parties uh, specifically, um, they have mentioned uh, servicing the middle class. Um, e economists haven't even coined the word uh, uh, middle class. They, ha they don't even know how to um, ha bring out a definition about middle class itself because if you look at it, um, just by the T4, uh, whatever's on your T4 slip and saying, hey, you're the middle class or whatever you can purchase, you're the middle class. That's not true. Um, a lawyer can identify as a middle class or a janitor can uh, identify as a middle class. We need to bring services out there to help everyone, all Canadians, um, whether it be the middle class or low income or high income, whatever it is, we have to make sure that the services are re required for everyone. Um, especially in uh, the residents of Peel, they wait, wait longer times in re regards to housing itself, 5.3 years to wait for housing itself. So the, the wait time for housing, immigration, because of the conservatives, how they balance the budget and due to the cutbacks uh, in immigration services itself. Uh, more than half of Peel's population is the immigration population. So we need to make sure that we provide funding to these communities so that they can provide the resources and the skills that Thank they you. need to contribute to the economy. Thank you, Ms. Yes. Gobanath. Ms. Den? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I got very deep grassroots in Brampton through my professional experience, my personal experience. Um, having worked uh, at the region of Peel with high-risk families, going into homes in very intense and crisis situations, dealing one-on-one -on -one with families, I have a very good understanding of what Bramptonians need, and I've been advocating for them for many, many years now. Um, so, like I said, all my work experience is dealing directly uh, in Brampton with families, uh, working with their issues, working it with their needs. But I also understand that, um, you know, it takes all three levels of government to work together uh, to provide for them, to uh, give them the resources that they need. Um, and the, re the fact of the reality is this, is that federally, we've doubled the transfers to provinces. And we actually have the most transfers to Ontario. And uh, I understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the provincial government and also municipal government's responsibility uh, to distribute that money. And I, I thank understand you, Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Carrot, your personal leadership style here in our community? Uh, yes, no, thank you very much for the question. And, you know, I consider myself a grassroots individual myself. Uh, you know, I've been involved with the community uh, back from my high school days. Uh, I've been part of the Liberals as back from my high school days. And talking about community work, uh, you know, I was the president of the Student Council, and I've worked a lot with, uh, you know, Cam H, the Peel Family Shelter, and the Big Brother Big Sister of Peel. So, yes, I have the same grassroots, uh, grassroots uh, you know, uh, I'm, you know, serve, you know, those are some of the things that I will be working to make sure that we pr provide for our middle class families here in Brampton West. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Larson, what would you like to ask of our candidates? I'm going to continue on this, and Ms. Ka, 
Uh, outline your strategy for meeting the needs of our aging population. What roles will formal care and affordable housing play at that point? Uh, no, thank you for, uh, for the question as well. And you know, Liberal government will work to ensure that Canadian seniors uh, get a secure and dignified re retirement that they, that they deserve. Uh, far too many Canadians are anxious about their retirement these days and after a li lifetime of hard work, uh, our seniors should not have to struggle just to make ends meet. Uh, right now, a Canadian who works their entire life uh, you know, on an average just gets 300, you know, approximately uh, $600 per month uh, upon retirement under the Canada Pension Plan. So over the next four years, a Liberal government will invest three times more in payments to our lowest income seniors. Uh, you know, we will lower the retirement age back to 65 uh, from, sev uh, from 67, which the Conservative uh, have done, and we will tie OAS and GIS to the cost of living for our seniors. And, and you know, one thing that uh, I was, uh, you know, very shocked to see, you know, when my conservative appointment was dropping off flyers uh, saying that we'll be, you know, that we'll be uh, cutting pension income splitting, which I just want to make sure it's clear. Uh, we will not be uh, cutting pension income split splitting for our seniors. And, you know, we will immediately immediately boost the guaranteed income supplement for our low income seniors by 10%. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Ms. Gobinoff? The only way to tackle this issue is to uh, come up with national strategies at the national level. Um, the Green Party just <laughs> does that. So we're proposing a national <coughs> pharma care plan for seniors, um, making sure that uh, they don't have to pay out of their pocket, not just seniors, but everyone else don't ha have to pay out of their pockets for these essential uh, medications. Um, another thing is we are proposing a housing plan, an affordable, predictable home care support, guaranteed livable income, uh, national dementia strategy and um, uh, the population for Alzheimer's and uh, dementia it's a common issue that uh, uh, all the seniors face today so we're coming up with a national strategy for these two issues um, uh, residents in Peel specifically they wait uh, more uh, time in, in regards to getting the long care beds uh, we need to speed up this process make sure that funding goes to that um, level and the Green Party just does that and also pension protection we offer that uh, and an expansion of the CPP um, and also promote uh, integration uh, programs so make sure that uh, the seniors are living within their community interacting with um, their family members as, as well we don't want to segregate them from our community just because you know they're at that level we want to make sure that they integrate into our community and live within our community Miss Ten. yes you know we we understand that uh, you know, seniors have worked hard their entire life. Um, they, they, we need to make sure that we keep them, uh, we take very good care of them, and that's what we, our government uh, is doing, and that's what our government is planning to continue to do. Um, we, we've doubled the uh, pension income splitting for uh, the seniors. We've enhanced the new Horizon program for seniors. Um, we've also have the he home accessibility uh, tax credit. As well, uh, our re-elect Conservative government will establish $2,000 for single senior tax credits. It's interesting hearing the Liberal Party saying all these uh, nice and fluffy things about what they're going to be doing, but I'd like to know where, th where the money is going to come from. Um, they overpromise and they don't deliver. And we, you just have to look at uh, Queen's Park and you look at the situation financially that they're in there right now. We need to ensure that we continue keeping our economy strong while we keep uh, a good care of our seniors as well. Thank you, Ms. Ten. Ms. Gobina? Uh, I just want to point out that I got a survey from an organization called CARP uh, in regards to uh, a national uh, uh, senior strategy. Uh, and I went through the survey itself and all their, um, uh, all their needs pretty much ma matches our policy. So I suggest that everyone go to the Green Party website and read the policies on um, what we're going to do for seniors. Thank you. Ms. Patterson? Mm -hmm. I had a gentleman uh, come into our campaign office yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, he is now retired and is caring for his wife, who is um, facing some health challenges. And he talked about you know, uh, being on a fixed income and the struggles. The reality in Peel is that 17% of seniors are living in poverty. And so supporting them through um, old age pension and uh, the guaranteed income supplement, which the NDP has committed to increasing will go a long way in supporting them. I think affordable housing is key. The wait list is at least six years. Uh, and so the NDP has a plan that addresses both uh, the immediate needs through direct income transfers, but also some of the longer term issues such as housing. 
Thank you very much. Ms. Carey, you have one final comment you want to uh, add? Yes, I just want to also uh, uh, talk about the fact that, you know, we will also introduce a more flexible and accessible uh, employment insurance compassionate care benefit. So that six months of benefits are available to those who are providing care for a seriously uh, ill family member. And I know as a registered nurse how important that, uh, you know, this uh, uh, policy is. And we will also uh, prioritize significant new investment in affordable housing and senior uh, facilities as a part of our Liberal government's $20 billion uh, investment social infrastructure plan so that will help create some of these nursing homes that will help uh, create some of these uh, affordable housing and as well as uh, you know parks and recreation for our, for our seniors thank you very much I'm gonna take it back to mr. Shamim and us uh, what would you like to ask our candidates we are uh, starting to run down on time we want to make sure we get as many questions in as we can sure so one of the burning topics that uh, the media has been uh, quite focused on of late I is uh, refugee and immigration uh, issues uh, one of the toughest jobs the federal government has is striking the balance between uh, protecting its citizens uh, and at the same time reaching out and helping those who are most vulnerable uh, in their hour of need. Uh, starting with uh, Ms. Gobinat, uh, if we can get some comments in terms of where you stand and where your party stands vis a -vis helping those who are in need in, in the international community uh, uh, and while balancing the needs of uh, providing security for uh, our domestic population. Uh, Let's start with Peel region itself. Uh, the 50.5 percent of Peel residents are immigrants, and uh, it's a highly skilled uh, workforce uh, of immigrants in Peel itself. Um, because of the cutback, conservative government's cutbacks in essential services uh, in uh, immigration, I work for the India Rainbow Community Services Appeal, which focuses on uh, integration needs, educational needs, and healthcare needs of uh, citizens in Peels. And I find that uh, because of these cutbacks, uh, uh, residents in Peel w wait longer times for immigration applications to process. Um, the whole uh, situation um, with um, the way how they're balancing everything itself, it's not its not fair for immigrant the immigrant community. Another thing the Green Party uh, uh, proposes is uh, na a, nas um, a um, natural disaster category to the immigration policy itself. There's a lot of issues all around uh, that's happening worldwide, uh, especially with the Syria crisis, and even in Africa, the drought uh, situation and uh, cr crop situation, uh, higher um, temperatures. Uh, because of all these issues, there are going to be a mass migration uh, of people relocating. So we need to make sure that the immigration policies are reformed. Thank you very much. Ms. Patterson? Yes, so we all know that immigrants are the backbone of Canada. My parents are immigrants, uh, and Peel, we see um, that the majority, more than 50% now, are immigrants. Uh, and so we, we are, we've always been a welcoming country. We've always uh, supported people, made sure that once they came here that they were able to access uh, employment that could you know, allow them the life that we all want. Um, that has changed in the last 10 years uh, under the Conservative government, changes to uh, both the immigration policy but also the programs and services. Uh, you know, and I see that on a day-to-day -day basis um, in supporting folks that those supports um, have been reduced. And I think it's important, and the NDP party is committed to uh, restoring much of that funding that goes for settlement uh, and helps folks to uh, adapt and adjust uh, to our country, to Canada. Thank you. Ms. Tend? Yes. Uh, I would love to uh, stand here and talk about immigration numbers because our, our, our party has a record number of immigrants that they brought into, uh, that they've admitted into Canada. Our Conservative go government uh, brought in 2.5 million uh, immigrants compared to the Liberal Party who only brought in 2.1 million, a difference of 400,000 immigrants. Now, the issue that, uh, that the, the question that was asked about the, uh, the, the crisis that we saw on, you know, on uh, the media, it's very sad and it's very heartbreaking what the images that we saw. Um, and as a mother, I'm sure Ms. Patterson uh, will understand that too, as a mother, it's, it, it breaks our heart to see a young boy, uh, uh, images of a young boy like that. But the fact of the matter is this, is that our party understands that there's three things that needs to be done here. We need to confront, uh, you know, uh, the ISIS military. We need to provide humanitarian aid. As well, we need to do refugee settlement. We have a record number of refugee settlements that we have done here. Um, Thank we you, Ms. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Kara, how do we balance uh, our, our role as a, as a humanitarian in, in the global um, environment with uh, safety and security at home? 
Uh, no, thank you for that's a great question. And, and you know, Canada has a unique identity on a global scale uh, as a peacekeeping nation and, and are for our humanitarian support. These values and identity are the things that Canadians are proud of. Uh, these values should be the guiding principle of shaping our foreign foreign policies. Uh, you know, ISIL is a real threat in Canada, uh, in the region and beyond. And Canada has a huge and a very important role uh, to play and defeat them. But the Conservatives have picked the wrong mission in the country. Uh, you know, the Conservatives have committed to Canada to a prolonged airstrike campaign with no clear objectives or timelines. Uh, you know, Canada should reorient the combat mission to training uh, more Iraqi soldiers behind the front lines and significantly, significantly increase our humanitarian assistance, uh, starting with the resettlement of 25,000 Syrian refugees. Ms. Tin? Yes, we've already, we've already settled uh, tens of thousands of refugees from Syria and Iraq. And this was before the image that came up with the media. We knew this was an issue, and we've been working on this issue for some time now. We've already con contributed billions of dollars to humanitarian care. Uh, this is the fact of the, the matter, is that we, we care, but we also understand that, you know, ISIS is, is, is a huge threat and uh, you know they're beheading journalists and they're, they're uh, raping women and this is something that we, we don't want to see. We need to work with our allies and we need to uh, stand with our allies in this mission. Ms. Gobinath and then to you Ms. Patterson. Yeah. I do want to point out that it's not, uh, as the Conservative uh, Canada has pointed out, it's not about how many people you bring into the country. It's what you do to the, uh, do for the people in regards to services. Other countries have brought in more immigrants than Canada. So especially with the whole Syria crisis itself, uh, other countries have accepted uh, more numbers. Um, it's not just one picture that you guys waited until one, for one picture to show up in the media to make a decision. There's many more pictures like that where ca Canadians should have done something in regards to this crisis. Um, Bill C-51, it changes the whole scope of immigration itself, targeting ethnic minorities. Um, and uh, the Liberals and the Conservatives are in favor of this uh, bill. And the only parties that actually stood strong for this is the Green Party, the NDP party. Mm -hmm. Ms. Patterson? Yes. Uh, so the point about B Bill C-51 I think is critical because bills like C-51 are not the answer to balancing uh, the threat against terrorism um, and uh, our support of countries and also immigrants. Uh, B bills like C-51 which was rushed through Parliament without the proper um, without the proper consultation with concerns uh, that it oversteps boundaries take us into a direction that we don't even we can't even anticipate and that's why the NDP was the only party to vote against Bill C-51. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tind and then to you Ms. Kara. Absolutely. You know every government has a responsibility and the number one responsibility is to protect uh, its, its uh, citizens and its residents. Now we know that uh, with the Conservative Party our number one priority is uh, protection of uh, Canadians and we want to make sure that we provide uh, the resources that are available to the government agencies to um, share information. Now as far as new bringing new immigrants into this country, I understand the other parties are saying all these lovely numbers that they want to bring in new immigrants, but the fact of the matter is this, is that when we bring in new immigrants from countries like Syria and Iraq, we make sure that we do the proper security screening before we have them come into this country because we have to make sure we protect uh, Canadians here at home first. Ms. Kara, then Ms. Gobinath. Oh, well, thank you, uh, Jay Paul. Uh, the Liberal Party of Canada is a party of balance. Uh, we know we have security needs and we know we need to protect our charter <coughs> of rights and freedoms. NDP on an extreme is saying there's nothing good uh, in the Bill C-51 and that we're just going to completely ignore the crisis that's been taking place uh, on the international stage. Conservatives on the other side uh, are using terrorists to limit our freedom and our civil liberties. Uh, we know that there are some good parts of the bill and there are some bad parts. We will make amendments. We will repeal problematic parts of the bill. The uh, Liberal Party has passed amendments on having a sunset clause, creating an oversight committee. Thank you, Ms. Kara. Ms. Gobanoff, the final word is yours. Amendments aren't going to do anything for the, the Bill C-51. Anything as innocent as holding a board in regards to protesting against an environmental issue, someone can get in trouble for that. Um, it takes away our uh, right to free speech. It, it undermines the Canadian legal system and our constitution itself. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the spirited comments. Uh, we now are uh, we're running out of the time for our, our, the debate portion of our, of our conversation, and we'd like to move to closing statements, give each an opportunity to uh, address the viewers one more time. Are we going to the reverse order in which we began? Uh, Ms. Gobanov, your final words. I do want to let you know that uh, as uh, residents of Peel Brampton West, um, 
we value uh, accountability, transparency, and trust. Um, the liberals uh, held government before uh, the conservatives, and they haven't met the trust of um, Canadians. Now the cons uh, conservatives came in power, and they haven't done anything. Um, the Wayne Party, our policies are for everyone. So please read our policies. Make sure that don't vote for someone because they are from your background or they they identify um, th they're from your community because that's not what voting is all about. Make sure that you read through the policies. Make sure that you understand them. Make sure that you support them before you actually take a vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ms. Gobanath. Ms. Kara, your final comments. Thank you, Jay Paul. Uh, friends, we need to ask ourselves, are we better off after 10 years of Harper government? And the answer is no. Uh, the Conservatives have taken our country on the wrong path. Uh, their plan is just not working for our middle class families. As you've seen today, our only Justin Trudeau and the Liberals have a clear plan to get Canada back on track. And our plan is the only plan that will make life easier for people in Brampton West. We will cut taxes for the middle class, reducing the middle class income tax burden by 7%. We will help you, we'll help you raise your family by giving up to $6,400 in child benefits per year, and it's tax-free. Uh, we will also create local well-paying jobs for, uh, you know, and invest $125 billion in public transit and infrastructure. We will create 120,000 new jobs for investing by investing $1.3 billion in jobs and opportunities for young Canadians. I'm a grassroots individual fighting for people like you. I will fight for the priorities and values of middle class families that live in Brampton West. On October 19th, please vote for the strongest choice in Brampton West. Thank you. Vote for Kamal Kara. Thank you, Ms. Kara. Ms. Patterson. I am committed to supporting, connecting, and uniting all residents of Brampton West and our region. The NDP believes in consultation, working with partners rather than unilateral decision making. Whether it's kickstarting our manufacturing sector, helping small businesses, investing in local infrastructure, building a national child care program, or increasing retirement security, I'm proud to be running with Tom Mulcair's NDP. We have a workable plan to help local families. With your support, we can defeat Stephen Harper's Conservatives. We can repair the damage done right here in Brampton West. In this election, voting for Tom and the NDP is the only way for us to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. And Ms. Tin, your final comments. Thank you. I'd like to thank Rogers TV, uh, as well as the Brampton uh, Business Board of Trade for organizing this uh, debate today, as well as the moderator and all the panelists here today. As well as my fellow contestants, I know it takes a lot of uh, courage to put your name forward, and I know we have some, uh, they're all female, so uh, congratulations on that. But the fact of the matter is this, it's a clear choice on October 19th. Do you want uh, to have other parties in power where they're going to be raising the taxes and, and introducing a job-killing carbon tax? Or do you want a conservative government who's already have a proven track record at keeping our economy strong, uh, balancing our budget, uh, being there for families? Each family now gets uh, $6,600 per year, thanks to our government. Uh, we're supporting small businesses. We've invested in infrastructure. We want to continue the wonderful work that we are doing. So on October 19th, I ask you to please vote uh, the Conservative Party uh, for our Prime Minister, Stephen Harper, and to ensure that we continue to keep uh, Brampton West Blue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this brings our debate to a close. I'd like to thank the candidates for their participation, our panelists for their time, and as well as you, our viewers, for uh, taking the time to join us today. On behalf of the Brampton Board of Trade and Rogers TV, we hope you found the discussion uh, enlightening and informative, and most of all, I want to urge you to please be sure to vote. Finally, please tune in uh, to Rogers TV, cable channel 10 on election night, for complete election night coverage, including up-to-the-minute results of the local ridings. It all begins on 9 p.m. on October 19th, here on Rogers TV. Thanks for watching.